Yes, we're here again, doing it like we always do, uh, back for another episode. This is actually number 10 of the Rabbit Season podcast. My name's Rabbit, I'm the host. Got my brother, producer, and my co-host, Ray Whitey, right there. Welcome back. And uh, we're here for another one. And this one's cool because um, we work together uh, with this next person. And um, and it's been real cool over the years. It's like a family family thing we got here. And, and um, th- this time, usually, uh, she's sitting next to me helping interview an artist. But today, I thought it would be cool if you were on this side. Um, but go. This is uh, Danny California, Bad Day Killer in bang, the building. Bang. Has a that? lot to do with things in hip hop right now. Curates events, helps manage artists, uh, puts events together, uh, coordinates our show. She's got a couple shows of her own. So um, to say she's a busy person is an understatement. But um, how have you been? Really, really well. Um, this month has been excellent for me uh i struggled a little bit with with mother's day i miss my mom and father's uh, day is a little hard for me too yeah. yeah definitely so shout out to everybody out there who was struggling during you know mother's day and if you are going to be struggling in father's day your parents can feel you so i did i did struggle a little bit and i had to give my little i don't know if you guys saw my post but i had to put some stuff up about how epic my mom is was Mm -hmm. forever will be so that that was a little difficult part but the rest of the month has been amazing and then happy late mother's day to you too and and for that for that (laughs) (laughs) yeah no but um you know besides that part i hope you and enjoyed your day a little bit as far as you know with your kids and everything like that um so let's talk about it uh let let the people know um first let's start off with how you kind of got into this because we're going to talk about all the things that you're currently doing but how did you get involved in hip-hop uh first and foremost to let to lead you to this point right here so um the way it went is uh i had a little studio in my home started out with just a computer and uh, i would record you know uh over instrumentals or over the long uh, intros of like songs like your so Barry you, White. You, you were, I was like just that. gonna say, so you were singing Mariah Carey <laughs> tunes, or no? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You know, I was doing my thing. Yeah, um, baby. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I built out a whole studio um, in the first house that I bought, and. Um, Back then, I was a, a manager for In and Out Burger, and I I love the company, great company. Yo, shout out to Animal Style. Oh everything. yeah, man. Um, but I wanted to see what it felt like to get dressed up every day and not smell like onion oh, when you yeah. get off work, right? Oh, uh, I, I, I worked at Burger King. Uh, I yeah. was a uh, yeah, I was an ex flipper myself at uh, McDonald's, and yeah, Ew. it was when I was a real youngster, and I would go straight, you know, and go home, shower, go to a party or whatever after backyard boogies. And I like the smell wouldn't come Still off my there. fingers. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. What the fuck? Literally, I'd be yeah. asleep and I'd go like this and go. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, oh, it would like wake me burn. up, right? Yeah. The smell of onion and raw meat. And raw and meat. Fried, yes. fried grease burns all over. Yep, all like. over my arms and stuff. And so I wanted to see what it was like um, to get dressed. So I got a job at a uh, LA Unified School District uh-huh. uh, as a as a school secretary. And I was only you know eighteen. <laughs> and um, so you were probably a distraction to the students yeah it was so (laughs) frustrating because when they get in trouble they would send them to the office and they'd all uh, pretty soon i had like a full-on classroom in the office and i'm like wait a minute they were trying to get in trouble right how am i supposed to do my job and there's like 15 kids here all just like sitting watching me work you know it's really uncomfortable and so um i got a phone call while i was at the office rage against the machine at the time was like my absolute favorite band um and i had already gotten written up for locking the office when they decided to do the protest concert on the you know the courthouse steps oh and you and you made and you were there yeah i was yeah. like f this job shit yeah, i yeah. locked the office and i was like i'm out if yeah. i don't fire me fire me i don't care i'm not missing this right i got to be a part of this history it's part of our history y'all yeah um and so i got a call and it and they were like hey uh you're a really big rage against the machine fan right and i was like yeah and they're like there's the documentary being shot about rage off the 110 you should go and get interviewed and i was like okay dope so i did the interview and the producer was like um 
you know, can you off top, can you just rap for us? And I was like, okay. So I spit something off top and that video ended up landing me on audition for a band, which I ended up being the vocalist for. Nice. And uh, yeah, so I was with them for like two years. We toured. Um, we were doing really great until we got signed. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's better to not be signed, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. and, and we'll get into that in a sec, too, because there's various reasons for why she says that. And we'll talk about that. Yeah, so that's that's kind of what gave me my start um, with music. And I've always loved hip-hop. I've been a huge concert goer, spent a majority of my money on live entertainment. Um, I've been working since I was 15, so like every time I had money, I pretty much would spend it on concerts and you know what I want to take with me to the concert and what I want to spend it on while I'm there. Um, and that's a majority of what my money would always go to and still kind of does. The same here. <laughs> yeah, it's there's something different about being a part of a live entertainment situation. Mm -hmm. It's just epic the energy exchanges yeah. whether you're the artist <clears throat> or one of the producers or just helping to put the event together promoting it whatever it is sound guy you know um audience it, well that's what i was going to get to is just that the people that are behind the scenes get the satisfaction from watching the audience have a good yes. time so it feels so, good yes there any, it does is there any genre of music you don't like i know you you have a <laughs> wide like palette of uh Mm -hmm. of, your, of your types of music that you like is there anything that that i don't, that like? I don't like because i know you, you know you, i know you like house i know you like hip-hop i know you like rock i know i you love like rock love hip-hop um, um you, i mean gosh i she sings opera <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i i can't think of anything that i actually don't like because uh, everything starts setting off right all music pretty much you know um okay mi gente te llamo <laughs> okay, but after about 15, 20 minutes or so, I do need a break for a little bit from reggaeton and banda. Just just a small break. I, I, I was actually going to, I almost said reggaeton and jumped the gun right there. <laughs> just a small break, yeah. you know, a, a little something different. And then, hey, bring it back. It's cool. But like, it starts to sound very repetitive for me. Yeah. So, um, I. I like when they mix it in, like at at, at uh, parties and stuff, when they actually mix it in. Yes. And they'll throw a couple joints, and I hear what you're saying. But you know what? Uh, on that note, I, I thought, like, I probably, I don't know what my least favorite is, but I used to think I, I hated country. And then, and then um, you know, and I know a lot of people know country's dope that are probably going to hear this. But then I worked um, night shift at this grocery store, and the, the crew leader, whatever, some cowboy i think he came from texas transfers i forgot where exactly but hardcore they had an accent and everything and that's what we had to hear all night while this you Ooh. know while we we're stocking shelves so i would catch myself singing and, and like they're they're catchy for one mm -hmm. but the other thing is they're um like similar to hip-hop yeah you, they tell like they'll tell a story from when they woke up in the morning and what they ate yep. and fucking that's all in a song you know yeah. that's pretty crazy for me like um, yeah i can't take you know, really too much of that hardcore death speed metal stuff. oh yeah uh, yeah after a while that it kind of like uh, that little kind of gets to me you know makes me want to like do something like, <laughs> makes him want to <laughs> crash his head through a, a glass table you know what's so interesting is if you play like black metal for kids they fall asleep Wow. Yeah, it's something with the lo-fi and the repetitiveness. I don't know what it does, but like literally, they knock out. Hopefully, it doesn't give them nightmares. The, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the um, because we man, we've seen some, some of the the ones the the ones that scream and stuff. Like I know they're hurting sometimes the next morning, man. That's oh, that's rough, rough on the vocals right there. Definitely. Um, you know, I wanted to tell you really quick. This is kind of a sneak peek, but that <laughs> apologies for that um, interruption. I have pretty much all my calls blocked right now. That one tried to get through because they on the it's okay to bother me no matter what <laughs> list and it uh -oh. is a guest that i know you guys are going to be excited for so not this upcoming oracle edition but the next one is going to uh feature the dj who produced brown skin lady by black star oh, oh shit. Wow. all right there. so i'm so excited and stoked about that he's probably confirming his flight or something and letting me know the itinerary for that oh good hey well that's good because uh and that's another thing and we'll talk about that as well but i mentioned you know hosting with me and stuff and it and it's been a, it's been a great ride and we'll we'll talk more about that but um let's go from where we were from the rock band um what where'd you uh what was your next moves after uh the couple years with the band yeah so um you know 
I enjoyed that. That was a good run. And a lot of you guys might know sometimes when you're in a relationship and you're in love, sometimes your partner, they love you so much that they like, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And so, um, no, no way. <laughs> That happens to people. <laughs> you know, it gets difficult, you know, to pursue your dream when the person oh, yeah. who you're with is not a part of what your dream entails or if their love for you becomes something like a fear and then, you know, anything that you do that it doesn't involve them, they're like the black spider man. Nothing gets no I'm what's the black spider man? I can't Miles I, Morales. <laughs> 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 she means the what the the dark with the, version with the teeth. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, venom. I'm venom. Sorry. Thank, Thank you, venom. Me. Venom. Puerto Rican spider. Oh venom. shoot. <laughs> you black cat. Sorry about that. Venom. You know they become venom in your story, and you're just like, bruh. Like I love you, and I just want to do this, but I still love you. You know, so that kind of happened. Well, you know, and then in your defense, it's like. um Sometimes you you uh, to give the the relationship a fair shot. You also got to put your all into it. So w if they can't see that balance, you still want to show. You know what I mean that you, that you're in on the relationship. And then you know if things don't work out from there, then you I I know what it is. Then you're like, damn, I wasted all that time. Yeah, yeah. I sold my SP. Yeah. Oh shit. Sold my groove box, like, bro, like everything, you know, my whole studio, I took it apart, basically, mm -hmm. um, and did what you said, you know, showed my commitment to my relationship and decided to build a family and whatnot. And so, um, you know, I did still involve myself in hip hop. Um, I built some websites for some of our, you know, hip hop. And and you know Heroes. what, and that's kind of where I was getting good because somewhere around that journey is is then where I think I first met you, which was this is quite a few years back now, um, because we knew each other even a few years before you even actually became part of the show as well. So mm -hmm. around that time is when, when I knew you were doing uh, work and stuff to help artists out. Yeah, I just decided I wanted to advocate for artists. Yeah. Um, I, I got to build those websites in the early 2000s. Um, and this is when I realized that my partner was kind of like not really excited about what I was doing because <laughs> I'm building websites now. So what does that really entail? I mean, you're sitting behind a computer basically. Mm -hmm. But those artists would be like, hey, Danny, like you're on the guest list for this and this and this show. And I'd be like so excited, like, oh, my God, partner, mm -hmm. let's go to this awesome show. We're going to be backstage with, you know, sick jacket and blah, blah, blah. So we'd be back there and literally like. Oh, yeah. You know, the look. Oh. The dude, the dudes who, who uh, try their hardest not to have fun. Well, it's not just dudes. There's, you know, a lot of females it's everybody. that way. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. all yeah. kinds of people. Yeah, yeah. And so I'd be like, "This is so exciting! Don't you think? Like, look where we are, and we're having a great time." And no, it's not. Yeah. When are we leaving? And I'm like, "Oh crap." Yeah. yeah. So um, I decided, you know what? I I did give it a shot, and that's like a chapter that ended. You know, all all chapters come to an end sometimes, right? So that one ended, and um. I'm glad we're not going to revisit it anymore. Yeah. Pass, pass right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I was like, you know what? I want to help artists to be successful and not have to struggle when it comes to, you know, physical health, fiscal health, mental health, you know, emotional health and business. So that's where I kind of decided. Well, I, wanted I, I wanted to. Because interesting about that is um, be, not only having the experience yourself being in studios and making music, um, but having that time to actually, like you said, be behind a computer, popping CDs, whatever it might be, um, and, and uh, kind of getting a gauge on where artists are, not only with their music, but sometimes you can follow their journey and see uh, not maybe what's lacking, but maybe where they can be a little better. Yes. And I, it's interesting because you got to sit. It's almost like a player, you know, on the on the bench for a little while and they get to sit and observe. And then when they come back in, they have that in their mental already, what they what they were able to observe without being in the game. So. It's so true. And then you also um, I guess it maybe comes with age, but like you don't want to see people go through yeah. if they can avoid going through what you went through. Mm -hmm. Some of them will take the advice. So you give it. And they do what they want with it. But yeah. at least, you know, you shared. 
So you're not watching this person struggle through something that they could possibly warp past, you know. And so in my opinion, as a collective, you know, we're all interconnected to each other. So as we each ascend to the next level, we all collectively grow because now think of it this way, that artist's music is going to be elevated. You listen to it. So now you're receiving the information, the downloads that they're getting through their elevated experience. So we're all growing. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was still like a journey that I was involved in being able to see other people get past where I left off. And then you're you're um you're you're still part of you're you're part of the team and maybe like that's the thing though like for the the casual observer observer um a lot of times they don't get to see um how, how much of a team effort someone's success is yeah. like you know whether it's a couple people a family member that believed in them a manager a support system but there's a lot involved with um, someone becoming successful. Or, you know, getting closer to achieving their dreams. So Definitely. And that's why um, whenever I do work with an artist, if they do have a partner or significant other, the first thing I do is thank that person, Mm -hmm. acknowledge them for their contribution and make sure that they're not feeling ignored in that moment Mm -hmm. and that they have my contact information so that because I'm going to be calling a lot and they need to know who I am and feel comfortable like, oh, this call needs to be taken or let me help out and make things quiet right now while we while they handle that. And then, you You know know what, that's that's real shit, because even on the when we do B side, you know, we we get um, a lot of artists, uh, female artists, DJs, different things, even co-hosts. And um, I always make sure I go slap hands with if they bring a significant other or even who knows who it is it could be their brother yeah. but i always just make sure you know that they know uh, they're here to do an interview mm-hmm. like there's nothing else that no uh you know ulterior motives if anybody came just to make sure they're cool or whatever yes once people are here i mean you know that but once people are here for a little while they know the vibes you know so. definitely but at first they are they might be leery. yeah you know you know it's protective it's you protective know? thing or yeah. fear you know it just depends on where they're at in their ev- own evolution we're some pretty scary guys you know <laughs> listen li- yeah we, we can look very intimidating me and my brother here uh no but you know what you, that's a that's an important thing and we're still going to get back we got stuff but just you know we just like to have conversations here and i just saw the homie post um and i'm not going to say names or anything but he's an artist and he also uh does tattoos and he put something on on his post you know that um i guess he had told the guy he's got to come in um basically by himself and i and i know that dude's protecting his own his spot which I understand because we got a spot here to protect as well. And um, so I understand why he did that. And plus it was going to be a long session, I guess. Mm. And um, and I guess the the significant other or whatever took it upon herself to DM or message him and say, like, oh, how dare you tell him to come by himself? Like, I would, I would never let him be away from me for that many hours. I mean, it was just... I mean, I felt bad for the guy, like, and I don't even know who it is, but I was like, holy shit, like, especially being, it's, and I don't mean to make, like, a double standard here or anything like that, or I don't even know if I used the right word, but especially being a guy and having someone basically say, you, you're not allowed to do something unless I'm, you know, I approve or I'm there, or, I mean, that just never sat well with me personally, no. and probably why I've been through relationships and, and different things, some of them were because of that kind of thing. Like Absolutely. I wouldn't sit there and put up but it was basically that and he was he was making a point like if you have to ask permission to come have a session with me, then don't make a session with me. Yeah. Like But that was just I just thought that wow, the nerve of of that uh, person. That lady yeah, and even if it was a guy or a girl, but it was the guy's wife or girlfriend, whatever it might be. But the nerve of them to basically say that they control that man, like or woman, whatever it might be. Is that 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 shit's crazy to me. To, I, I just, I know I've seen people go through it. I've been near it before, mm-hmm. but it's just I've always, I've been so independent since I was a kid. I guess I could never let that fully engulf yeah. me, you know. And I mean, there's different tactics of doing that. Some people will guilt you, mm-hmm. you know. Some people will, you know what I mean? Like they'll make you feel bad, like if you're doing something to hurt them, even when you're not. And mm-hmm. P stands for partner, not probation officer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like. They they even put something at the end like oh uh, uh thank, we, you can keep the deposit we'll find another artist 
and oh thank but thanks for the uh compliment on the design whatever design they picked and then <laughs> it even showed his response is this real like because i that would have been my response is wow. someone is someone making a joke right now or are you fucking with me or is this yeah. real but yeah that that just uh man i just couldn't i i couldn't be in a relationship <laughs> like that yeah you know? there's you gotta have trust even yeah. even in a business relationship there's yeah. gotta be a, a certain level of trust you know maybe yeah. not right at the beginning you know at the beginning you're kind of watchful and stuff but after a year or two, three, four, it's like, come on, man. Then it starts to feel like you're being held hostage and yeah. shit. Like I'm you, in trouble because you had a bad dream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your own, yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Hey, oh, see, geez. yeah, he, <laughs> oh, the dreams, <laughs> the not the dream. Scenario. Yeah, yeah. wake up and gets, like, I get slapped in the morning. Like, what, what did I do? I was yep. sleeping here. All pissed off. Yeah. In, well, in my dream, you did this. But no, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I've been there, man. Yeah. I've been there. That's, that shit's crazy. But, but you know, uh, that being said um um getting back to the the artist thing um kind of led us to where we are now you you still kind of you curate events um there's a lot of people don't know i I think one of the i don't know if it was the first time but one of the first times i might have met you here first with an artist that came in you came in with one of the artists i believe um that you may have been um, working with at the time but um, I believe it was an event you threw for Razcast. Yeah, that's when I remember first meeting you. Was with Underground Hip Hop blog, the homies. Oh, releasing something. okay. So that yeah. was a record release party yeah. for intellectual And I might property. be wrong, but that's what I remember kind of when we first started like linking and networking and working. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's probably the first time that I had to maybe go back and forth with you on a regular basis. Yeah. To uh, a coordinating stuff. Yeah. yeah. Prior to that, I was probably just standing, observing like <laughs> the, the way some of you guys do when you come and check out the B-side and how it goes. I yeah. was probably in the crowd like that. Like, wow, this is really dope. Yeah. And, and but it was it was cool because I got to see like oh, she's doing a lot of work. And then I remember even because I already had uh, Razkaz was the homie already at that point, um, too. But. I remember speaking with him. I was kicking it with him and Digi. Shout out to Indigenous and, hey, Dig. and the brothers over there at Where Underground. Everlast was there, I think, right? No, no, it was Lethal. It was it was a DJ. But yeah, he was spinning a little bit. Um, but that I got to actually see and converse with Razkaz, and he's a. Uh, I go. She's doing a lot of stuff here, man. I go. She coordinated us making sure we were part because I think we brought a camera guy and everything, and. Um, He's all, yeah. He goes, dude, this is the shit. I like, you know, artists that say that, like, they need someone to do some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. They need to concentrate on networking and making the music. Being creative. Being creative. There you go. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain event? Oh, I just want to ask you real quick that, um, because you've, and out of all the ones you've done, like, like, which one sticks out? You know, whether you've hosted it, whether you've curated it or promote, whatever it was, like, which one can you think of as just the one that just, it was just the topic, just with everything, it just went. Uh, the one that goes for my spirit is um, the Hip Hop for Life fundraiser that I did. I did another one uh, prior to that as well, and they were both along the same theme. And, um, you know, some of some of our elder artists and elder contributors to hip hop, you know, they might not have received the same type of advice that I like to share regarding fiscal health. And fiscal health is financial health. Um, and so... You know, not that they didn't have a lucrative ca- career, but they might not have planned their their money in the, in a way that supported them in the future when things got a little dry. And so I think the one that stands out to me the most is Hip Hop for Life because uh, we were able to raise, uh, you know, a significant amount of money, you know, over $5,000, i will say, uh, for a, a, an artist who was homeless and had been homeless for more than a year I want to say and he he needed help Mm -hmm. and uh, he's a huge contributor to a lot of music that we enjoy and you know he was sleeping on park benches and things like that I know the story of man and uh, we need more of people that think like you on that note a lot of the times we don't know because these people are not going to just I mean it's not easy to just uh, voluntarily put the you know out there you know I'm home I don't have a place to stay like right that's really hard for anybody let alone an artist or a new musician or anything like that so yeah definitely and so a lot of people came together for that they donated their time their performances everyone who came in brought a donation no one got in free that night and um, you know we got him off the street and back on his feet and feeling healthier and happier and more well adjusted and um, that was a really significant one for me and um, him and I are 
pretty much family now because yeah. uh, at the time I was homeless. And so when he realized that I was homeless and I turned around and got him placed in a home, he was like, Danny, like you needed that. Why didn't you do it for yourself? And I was just like, you know, I was transitioning and I have faith in what I was doing. So um, I've I've owned my home since I was 19. I've never been like a renter, but I literally was just renting a room for me and my entire family to be in that room all in one bed like this is just like some charlie bucket freaking willy wonka oh we shit we you grew know? up like that danny <laughs> we we know what time it is man we my mom had to do it she you know uh to, she had to move where we had to move to support us and um you know single mother coming up and with all boys and so we've been in the situation but you know it made us all tighter because of it and you know what the other thing is is like I appreciate shit a lot more, I think, because of the struggle I've been through. Definitely. Uh, I mean, my dis my kids definitely take better care of their shoes now than they ever did. Yeah, before, right. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, I'd be like that. I just got you those last yeah. month. Oh, I skated them. And I'm like, what? yeah, bro, it's like a freaking almost two hundred dollar pair of shoes. Yeah, you know, they don't do that anymore yeah. at all. You know, so there are lessons that come from that. But I think that's probably the most significant one for me. And um yeah, I think I think that's the one that stands out the most. Yeah, because that's kind of what it boils down to sometimes is people don't get. And I don't know if it's necessarily um, an old. Uh, as a, I mean, I know a lot of the times it's a maturity thing, um, but I know a lot of people, too, that were on this thinking path, you know, uh, maybe way ahead of their time. But to fill your spit, like when you can help people like that's so rewarding in yeah, itself, you know, it's like. Rewarding. You know, we've done some some events that, you know, I've gone home. I just I feel like great about even though the next day, like, you know, I might have had a shitty job or whatever. I had to get up and go to. I might have been late on a bill, whatever it might have been. But that day I felt fulfilled that I knew I helped. you know, even if it is just one person. But yeah. but some of these days, like I, I, I knew we helped a few people and and, and that's all it take sometimes is to get somebody um back on their feet a little time to think be clear without worrying about where they're going to eat the next day and shit yes. like that where their next meal's coming from or where they're going to sleep and then they can clear their head and get back to business and yeah. get their shit together you know i think there's different types of equity in one of my most recent posts i wanted to thank everybody who helped me out um with a favor i asked a favor really quick and a bunch of people just did exactly what i asked mm -hmm. and gave me what i needed to be successful for that day mm -hmm. and i said you know thank you guys you make me feel really rich because this is social equity i needed something and every single person said here i got you boom 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 and made my show epic because they they did exactly what i asked and you know there's different kinds of equity and there's different types of richness and i think what you're alluding to is that type of fulfillment of it's not financial you know we don't always get paid for what we're doing yeah but there's a different type of pay that we're receiving mm -hmm. you know and it, it, it it'll pay forward in other ways even even having a platform as you know as well from doing yours like through all these years myself and my brother like if we the reward has been very little besides what you're saying and that reward is big and especially when you get to see artists grow and uh, and become what they should be and especially when they still recognize where they where they did come from and that one of their first couple interviews might have been here at the b side and when they they recognize that and it feels good to be part of that journey or when they come through after and saying like um you know oh i, I used to watch this show you know five six years ago and i can't even believe i'm here now it's like stuff like that when we hear that it's kind of like you know that's you know it m makes us feel good about what we're doing at least at least you know like so my favorite is um danny i'm coming back because i made it and you're the first person who actually took me seriously believed in me and listened yeah. to what i gave you and gave me honest feedback or sent me in the correct direction and now i want to work with you because now i feel like i'm of enough status that i can actually keep you busy let's work that one i love so you know this was kind of something i wanted to get into too because you know something you just mentioned that um it wasn't monetary what you gained whatever day um and and it wasn't monetary for you the day that you had an event to help somebody else um but it was just people giving back as a as a hip-hop family instead of you know competing to against each other for one day or one hour whatever it might be because i know hip-hop was based on that originally but 
Um, is that something you'd like to see more of in hip hop or music in general? Is just maybe <laughs> people helping when they know they can? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I think that you know we're way more influential as a as a genre than what we realize, and I think some of us. A majority of us are starting to actually understand what the breadth and the depth of our actions, what it entails in terms of from a marketing standpoint and from like a consumer standpoint. Um, every single thing you can think of right now from Samsung phones to clothing to, you know, candidacy in, in elections, hip hop has a huge part in that and um you know if we could do that imagine if we elevate what our messages are and how we treat one another and the way we address each other and start another trend and it's you know something along the lines of not pulling each other down but you know elevating one another and i'm starting to see it i think collectively we are all growing yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say I feel like we're on that path too because th- there was even a thing that came out that they said it's like the record of the most people that registered to vote ever, and it's like it's all within that younger age range. Like yes, the, the younger generation. And so and that had a lot to do with you know um, uh, not only celebrities but athletes and people in a position of influence can use. Um, it, it's it's amazing how many people don't, but to use their power for good, you know. Yeah. And 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 it and it's not. They didn't do it telling you who to vote for. It's mm-hmm. it's about make sure your voice is heard, though, at least. And whether people believe in that or not, um, we're seeing differences being made. And again, things that I never thought as a youngster that I would be being part of, I am now because I always thought the fact, oh, nobody's going to listen or all these people are not going to, um, nobody's going to care or whatever it might be. But it starts with that one person you you reach one they might spread that that message of love or peace whatever it might be to a couple of their people mm-hmm. and or then, outrage y- yeah any, any yeah. message. yeah yes yeah. or that um but the fact that it, it starts with that if we mm-hmm. don't get out there and say something or or make our voices heard or or try to make a difference there will ever never be a difference made so yeah you know. N- no more bystanders no more people just standing by you know, mm-hmm. watching stuff and saying, oh, you know, I don't agree with that. But what are you doing about it? Yeah. Yeah. And and that um, again, like Shay was saying, I think that's something that I think we're improving as not only as a hip hop culture, but in general, just people. I mean, it's still like a lot of, um, you know, a lot of hatred going on, all the stuff going on in the Middle East and stuff. And and um, it's it's really sad and inhumane. And I don't know if you guys caught Kyrie Irving, you know, on the NBA, you know, on the New Jersey, <clears throat> on New Jersey. They asked him a question, um, NBA related, of course, and he literally told him, you know what? Uh, yeah, we did OK in the game today. But you know what? My mind's not on that right now. Basketball is not the biggest thing in the world. I care about people like I, this. I'm paraphrasing here, but I, I care about people and people not being treated uh, did you catch that shit? Oh, that. dude, you guys got to catch it if you didn't. Wow. By the time, you know, this drops, I'm sure everybody will have caught it. But it's just what he said was, and I'm not his biggest fan. Right. So let's put that in perspective. It just uh, as an you. NBA player, um, even though he's great, he's great. But um, that's just my preference. And, and but what he said there, I, I but I respect that man. So that that's all that really matters. And, and um, if you guys listen to what he said, it was just like, he put everything in perspective and he even wow. said, I'm glad that, you know, if you want to know after he said all that stuff and that more people need to love each other and help each other and, you know, kids are being killed. And he mentioned this stuff all real quick. And then he says, now in an NBA related, I, I'm just glad all of us are healthy and get to go home to our families. Nice. And we get to play the game, a game we love. In. And it was powerful what he said. It well, was it's, it's like what uh, <clears throat> Greg Popovich is kind of outspoken on a lot of things, too. And, and. And, you know, the only thing is, like, there's a lot of people that will, you know, because of who they are, you know, oh, oh, you, you're a millionaire. You don't need, you know, like, what are you complaining about? You have, you know, but, yeah. like, you know, they, they're just, they, they have a right to an opinion, too, whether they're a millionaire or not. Like, right. You know, and, and this is, they're using their platform to actually bring awareness to it, which is something that they should be doing. 
you know, like the, instead of them just taking their money and just, you know, and and and, and a lot of them, too. Uh, I mean, some of them not, but a lot of them remember where they came from. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't always rich. I got, yeah. you know, my talents or or this opportunity led me to where I am now. But it doesn't mean you turn your back on the communities you came from. So right. with reminds that, me of Meta World Peace. Oh, yeah. Hey, and with that, hey, Meta World Peace. Hey. I get out. Oh, yeah. yeah, for him. Shout out. Shout out that homie. Oh, man. He, he, he took the time to come down. Uh, to our show and and show love and uh, sign autographs yeah. and take pictures with yeah. people. That was rewarding front. for me to meet a uh, world champion of the yeah, LA Lakers because I'm such a huge fan. So I, I bought one of the sweatshirts. Yeah, yeah let's LA go, Lakers. let's go, Lakers, man! As the playoffs are getting getting in gear right now. <laughs> hey, um, so let, let let me ask you this, man. And without, I don't want to get obviously, uh, you know, too negative or anything too specific. But I'll do my best. But something, <laughs> yo, you could say whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, me, the way I want to question it, I mean, uh, uh, word it is, um, you know, what is something that uh, like a, a common mistake maybe artists make or something that you might hate that they do that maybe more artists should not be doing or, or paying it, they should be paying attention to? Um, I think one of the main things is whether or not they decide that this is something that they actually want to do for a living or a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, if it's something that you want to do for a living then you need to wake up and do it every day. Mm -hmm. And you need to know why you're doing it. If it's something you're just doing for a hobby, that's cool too, you know? Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think not differentiating between the two and acting like you're serious when you really aren't. So when it comes to, you know, people maybe wanting to, you know, work with you and you're not, you know, doing what you're supposed to or thinking you need a manager when you actually don't yet, um, you know, and then, you know, being upset, for example, because you don't feel like the manager is keeping you busy. Well, guess what? No one's calling for you. That's yeah. why. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like we can't just poof, create this magical career for you because <laughs> you that's what a manager get a, does. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you know what? And, and again, too, that's going with, um, you know, shows that that we you know that people throw like events or or even um coming on a platform um it's not that platform or the people throwing the shows they're creating the the event and the space and the you know the environment for it to take place but it's everybody's collective to collective effort to bring the people in right but people you know i'm glad <laughs> i'm glad you said that because that's a pet peeve of mine as well mm -hmm. but um they just feel they're they they're out of okay wait they got me on this show i don't have any more work to do after this yeah. you know and it's like yeah you, that's five minutes before i perform yeah right there. Mm -hmm. no it's like no that's where the work starts now yeah. you got an event make sure people go there and see your message and your yeah. music so. i always want to know how many friends do you have and they're yeah. like what do you mean you know, and I'm like, well, how many friends do you have? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't get it. What, how is that relevant? Mm -hmm. um, if you don't even have 10 friends, mm -hmm. what makes you think you're going to have 10 fans, let mm -hmm. alone 100 fans? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. w what's our incentive of booking you if you're not bringing at least 20 people? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. so that that's yeah Cause, so, hey because i spit hot fire right and that's a skill that's a life <laughs> skill in general i mean it doesn't even just ha have to do with hip-hop yeah you know um being able to have acquaintances or people who consider you valuable where they want to invite you places or ask you to come because they appreciate you attending stuff um being influential in terms of the things that you say having substance and people wanting to hear them that's just a life skill bro and you know what that and that's the thing is like as an artist, whatever you are, producer, director, a supermodel, whatever it is, it it doesn't make you less of that whatever you are to actually support someone else back mm -hmm. like it, it really it, it doesn't have to be monetary all the time. It, it costs you nothing. Some of these people, all they have to do sometimes you can repost your friend's business or, you know, they might have a lot of followers and. You, they might have sponsored you with some gear back in the day. What 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 does it hurt you to repost that? Yeah, is it gonna lose you fans? And if it does, do you want those fans? If right. they if they can't help people that are starting just like you did at one point, like Crooked Eye stood out to me a couple of days ago. Shout out to King Crooked. Oh um, man, yeah, he ha he's such a humble guy. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, so the amazing. the whole family is man. All the all the, shout out to all For of them, man. The shoe what gang, up? big homie, Mad Man. What up? Hey, homie? Mad Man, we love you, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he had on a shirt and it was like one of those shirts that said like, you know, 
RZA, Jizza, like it had like five or ten, and it wasn't all Wu Tang members. It just had like epic people, you know, Sean P. I don't, I can't remember specifically. It's a shirt, it's a hip hop shirt you guys can get, and it's got like a bunch of different artists' name on the front. His name's not on there, and he had it on, and I was like, you oh, know you, what? you know what? That's I saw it. That's from his uh, Crooks Corner. Okay, the, dope. So it's yeah, his shirt. He's but paying. It's, he's paying homage to the people that he's he, he's respecting. They came to sit down yes. with him. And it's, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's beautiful. I was just yeah. like, you know what? I like that. I like mm-hmm. that because there's a lot of artists that are going to be like, well, I don't dick ride. So no, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give such and such props. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And that's dick riding. Yeah. No, it isn't, bro. It really isn't. If the person deserves their flowers, give it to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to take anything away from you to say somebody's dope. Yeah. I, I, I never understood that either. I, it doesn't make you seem like less of a man, a woman, whatever. If you say like, oh, they just got down on stage or, you know, even if you're on the same lineup, yeah. that, that you're, they're really not your competition. Wait, mm-hmm. You're trying to win over the, the people to, to hear your message and your music. And some people, I guess, lose that point. They'd rather be in the, the, the beef or the negative and, you know, dwell on that. But yep. I'm glad you said that because, yeah, I think that's a that's a big thing is people not um, uh, being prepared. How we started it is. Um, another way it could be like sometimes you might never get the shot again like yeah you might be an artist that yeah there's no problem that you might have a a job to fund your what you're doing at the moment mm-hmm. to pay for your studio sessions um and i know you, you got to get sleep at some point but but here's the thing if you get that call and there's an artist that this is an opportunity that doesn't come all the time or a producer you can work with um and you do yourself a favor artist and get up and take that Go handle that business and then go get your couple hours of sleep and handle it. But that reminds me of Kazi Jones. Uh, he told me a story about having an opportunity to work what with up? Ariano. Kamikaze, oh, my brother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ariano is a dope producer. He's one of one of my faves. He's in my top ten. Oh, yeah. And um, he had flown out to see Ariano, but he had worked. The, he's a school teacher. Yeah. Kazi's a school teacher, so he had worked, and then he flew to see Ariano, and he was like, "Oh man, if I could just get a couple hours of sleep before we get in the studio," and Ariano was like, "No." Mm-hmm. You're going to get in and you're going to do all these songs now. We're going to finish this and then you go to sleep. And mm-hmm. Kazi was like, he's a legend, so I just did it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yep. that's right. I've been in those situations <laughs> before, too. And it's like, you know what? I get my sleep. Don't worry about mm-hmm. it. I'll get it later. You hear a lot of stories like that from NBA players about Kobe Bryant. Like when they worked with them. Oh, no, you're not going to visit your family. We're going to practice. We're going to shoot some shots. Yeah. Until, you know, all night. You know? So yeah. Somebody was saying that. I think I can't remember if it was... Uh, uh olympic time or something I, I don't remember but it was somebody that you know they 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 were playing together suddenly and then he was oh he asked oh what are you gonna do tonight or something or tomorrow what i forgot what it was yeah like i can't remember the if it was olympics or not and uh and he said you know i got my family's in town i figured i'll visit my family Oh no! You can talk to them later. We're gonna go in the. You're gonna go with me, and we're gonna we're go gonna shoot. Practice. We're gonna go shoot in the yeah. in the uh, you know on the court. So. Let me just shoot this last free throw, and then I'll walk off with my torn hamstring. Oh right? man, <laughs> oh, crazy man! And shot, shot, man, congrats to him for and uh, oh, for making the Hall of Fame. Obviously, it was gonna be first time, whether he was, you know was not with us or not. Um, and then yeah. um, respect to his wife for being so. Uh, you know poignant and yeah, all that during this stuff, so. during this whole time man she's been nothing but you know professional and and uh, uh mature about everything yeah. so shout out to her for that man hey um besides the common mistakes uh you know again um this is not to go anywhere negative and, and anything again bringing just awareness to it but um being a, a, a woman or a female in in this industry, um, I don't want to say especially because it's like, I mean, if it's sports, it's, it doesn't really matter what industry it is. It could be Wall Street, whatever. Mm-hmm. Being a female uh, surrounded by males all the time and different uh, situations like even jealous jealousy and different things. But um, can you I, I just want to speak on how you handle um people being borderline like harassing or Mm. uh disrespectful or inappropriate um because one thing i know about you you carry yourself well and you've you've experienced life enough Mm -hmm. to where a lot of these things um you've learned how to deal with Mm 
Yeah. But there's a lot of people and like younger artists, younger females that um, they they might not know how to handle the situation. Yeah. I mean, how do you deal with these situations? Because it's whether we want to admit it or not, it's common. Yeah. I I hear about it all the time. Like I I I I you know been around it. I've heard about it. I I have friends that are females and guys that have seen both sides and. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know it's there. So yeah. we can't, it's another situation where we can't keep denying that it's there. Absolutely. So how, how is it that you handle these type situations? And, um, when someone maybe is taking it out of, out of context of what the business is. Yeah. Um, you know, this is another life skill and it's, <laughs> right? not, it's not just about hip hop. This is about healthy boundaries mm-hmm. and knowing what your healthy boundaries are and what you're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. So If it's something that you, the way that I carry myself with it is, am I going to feel comfortable if this is repeated? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to feel comfortable if me and Rabbit are sitting in a room and Rabbit tells a story where it includes me? Am I going to be okay with what he's saying? So that's my first question always in in every scenario is, is this going to be something that I'm going to be happy telling telling to people later? Mm -hmm. That's my first one. If I can say yes to that, Kyle, do it, whatever it is, right? But if it's something where you, you're you not going to ever want to have to revisit that moment again, then you obviously know you're putting yourself in a in a predicament. Well, and, and, and sometimes, too, through life experience, you have to chalk it up when, like, somebody, like, you know, maybe they're a little buzzed that night. And mm-hmm. not, I'm not talking about touching you or anything like that, but maybe they made like a flirty comment or something that might right. not might not have made that before where it's like a little awkward. But it's like, man, this guy, he's just a little buzzed, like he's mm-hmm. having fun right now, you know. And that's the thing, too, as a life skill, you have to be able to differentiate the yes. two. But as a lady, I would think that you would know when something's just like this is way out. This, you can like, feel it in your yeah, yeah, yeah. My thing is babe. I don't like being called babe. No. And so when someone's when someone's like, hey, babe, I'm like, you can call me DK. You can call me Danny Killer. You can oh, call you me Killer. Bad day killer. Yeah. You know, I give them the options instead of saying don't call me that. I don't say that. Mm-hmm. I, I tell them what I want them to call me. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. That's the last time. They don't do it again. Unless they're like super old. <laughs> Shout out to the O O triple O double O G. That might just be a how they I mean, you know what <laughs> I mean? No, even the, the some of the old schoolers, they say straight out baby, like, mm-hmm. hey baby. And they don't mean nothing yeah. by it. That's just that's, that's how, how they, they talk. Grew yeah, I'm up. super old, but I don't talk yeah. like that yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. Not yet. And rolling and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like little Danny Zuko's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So I, I just, you know, I thought that's something important to bring up mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure, like, you know, I think we talk about the differences a lot, but it must be really hard to be a female, like, especially around uh, a male-dominated in- industry, you know. See, and I feel bad for males because mm-hmm. I feel like. Females sometimes are able to slide through the door a little easier. Oh, okay, yeah. There's that side too. You're right. You're so right. for me, I feel I feel hard, I feel like it's like you guys have it hard. Yeah, we have it hard too. Um, but like you know, I've I've gotten clients, for example, who said, "Man, you know, I tried to find some dirt on you because I was considering working with you, and I couldn't find nobody has anything." to say about you and i'm like i keep it that way you know that's how i feel comfortable operating no one would judge me if i was with one of the artists that i might have managed nobody would judge me i just don't want to do that to me that's like shitting where you sleep yeah you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna have a boyfriend on the block where i live either you know what i'm that's like come on y'all if you don't want to be with that person anymore and then you got a new boyfriend every time you come by this will gonna be looking like what's gonna happen you know if you feel some type of way what's he gonna do say stuff about you right like and then that yeah the the jealousy and all that kicks in but i i see that that flip side of it too and i'm glad you brought it up being a female we could just keep bashing dudes but um and and we weren't doing that by the way but but but, but you know who you are if you're trying to take advantage of a young lady who needs a little bit of opportunity you know what i'm saying (laughs) and then there's that side too though and then some girls be taking that to another level and and going you know what i i know i could further my opportunity if i just do this and then but once it it gets around that you kind of did that a few places it it, it you know your reputation kind of goes a little bit astray my know? thing <laughs> is and i have i have artists that i've worked with that this has happened to them so i'm not gonna and you know what 
it's happened to me, but in a little bit of a different way. So um, some of the people that I've worked with that it's happened to them would be like they're working with a certain producer or a certain MC and they're getting opportunities to be on collabs or they're, they're being given beats. But then it doesn't work out in the relationship or the dynamic that was set forth because they weren't straightforward about what they were willing to give and what they wanted to get. It was gray, right? They, they didn't speak on it. And then they're like, oh, I couldn't get my music back. They're holding my music hostage. Then it's been the flip side where, like, I'll find a producer who I think is very talented. And he's in his garage phase, right? He just got his little home studio type of deal with somebody. But she thinks, thinks it's just a hobby or whatnot. And then I hear the beats. I'm like, this is fire. I'm going to get on this or I'm going to bring some artists, right? So I'll maybe do a couple tracks with this person start booking him out and getting other people coming into the studio where they, this person's actually making money and then all of a sudden the partner's like I'm turning off your internet I don't want you to be doing this anymore and they pull the plug and then that producer's like oh, I have to choose between my partner or this music because you're making it real and they never thought I'd get out of just a dream. You know what I'm saying? So there's different different ways that it happens. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it, it it all boils down to not being clear and not acknowledging what you expect, what you're willing to give, and and what the rules are. So, so I, I mean, do you think that that right there is the probably the uh, the first spot? Like any female entering a male dominated industry, like. Set, set your I mean, especially personal boundaries. Yeah, personal boundaries. But, you know, and, and then when you go in the room, command your respect with how you carry yourself. And mm -hmm. but you, you also, really don't have to command it. Yeah. As long as you carry yourself and you respect yourself mm -hmm. and you love yourself, you'll you'll receive that because people will mirror what it is that you reflect. Mm -hmm. So if you're not if you're not having respect for yourself, if you don't take yourself seriously, how is anyone else going to do that? Mm -hmm. you, that's that's how I feel about it. And and then I I've been in you know the the other side of it too. You know back in the days, of course. But you know where like maybe a female is like flirting with me in a situation, and then um, and then you can kind of tell like um, uh, like you know I'll play along. She's she's done this before. Like I you, you know you can kind of mm -hmm. you can kind of tell oh, she wants a you know whatever it might be a quickie or whatever but you get you get a my quickie, yeah grab it, get it. that's a get it McDonald's. yeah oh yeah when i used to worry she wanted some nugget meal she wanted fries. some free ch fucking chicken at churches no but, but but you know what i mean like you can kind of tell when a when um they're um Wanting not, a nugget I guess, and a huggy yeah not maybe not <laughs> respecting themselves and you can kind of see it from the male side too like when when it's like uh, she's done this before she mm -hmm. was probably in someone else's studio a week ago you know right. and it's like all right i'll play along for a little while but then you also know you're not really going to take it serious and um in your head i mean she might have lost some respect points for that i mean you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just saying from a male perspective but there's also a thing where um you know females can wear what they want mm -hmm. they can talk how they want that doesn't mean that it's okay for you to do whatever you want so that's i just wanted yeah. to it, it is boundaries and you have to uh communication is key but no one is able to just you know take advantage of anybody in that way when they're not down with it you know i feel that yeah there uh, definitely needs to be you know consent yeah. and uh i think being clear you know i, I might just be too direct a, of a person you know what I'm saying? So, so I mean, but that sets the boundaries clear. That's yeah. true, right? I prefer the bitter truth yeah, over right? a sweet lie uh -huh. any day. Just shoot it to me straight. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't peel the Band-Aid off one hair at a time. I just rip the motherfucker uh, off. Same here. You know, so it's just easier that way. And, and that's how I function in business, in friendships, and relationships. Y'all know. You see me when I'm in go mode and I'm like... Are we gonna start at this? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. and you guys, you guys always kind of calm me down. You know yeah. what I mean? But you don't take it personally. Yeah. You know that I'm just trying to handle my business. Yeah. You know. Same thing, man. I, she, I give my brother a hard time, and he gives me. We we we're just trying to be the best. All of us, the best we can be. And, mm -hmm. You know, on that note, though, I, I just wanted to say to give the ladies their their proper due because it ha it happens more to ladies. Yeah. But I've been in the situation before where like someone that I wouldn't expect or, or something like um, being at work or a different place. And then someone acts like way different than that. And then I feel like, 
you, like mad uncomfortable and shit. And then I'm like, damn, imagine ladies go through this shit almost every day, if not every day. Like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm feeling uncomfortable right now. And I'm like, <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's happened. So that's where I'm like, fuck, this hardly happens to me. So imagine a lady having every to day. go through this every it's, fucking yeah, they day. They might be like you and, and they sit straight forward. They're about the boundary, what it is, how it's going to, you know, not happening. And then, but you know, male their ego, they take it really personally, and so they end up, you know, sometimes like end up treating if they see him like just treating him like complete shit, like it's like oh shit, you know, because they really just hurt their ego. It's like no, you, what do you mean? Look at me. You know, you're <laughs> Here's kind of how I see that. Um, I took away from this. I I have a sales background, so um, in sales, you know, if you want ten percent return on on your effort you you really do have to you, you have a one in ten ratio I, I wrote it in a couple of my posts so let's say for example let's just use a party for example you know um more or less you know for every 10 people you invite to the party one is pretty much guaranteed to show up others might you know it just depends on how influential you are and how how weighted your request is to those people so that's you know the way you forage relationships and and how how bonded you are with those people but in general on average it's one in ten so ladies um you know a guy hitting on you is not any reason to dangle it over his head or to be offended or overly flattered by it and you know gassed up because it's a law of averages so he technically has to hit up 10 females <laughs> to get that one hey, for the week copy or the one. okay but wait <laughs> yeah it's a copy and paste for some but listen good point but there's some people such as myself um but there's some people that um kind of like i grew up my mom raised us but like we i'm courteous to ladies like and I don't and like I, I mean, I don't overly not overly complimenting, not nothing like that. But, you know, stuff like that. And so a lot of times, um, sometimes it like you said, it gets misconstrued to the like hey, that guy just gave you a, a it's just a regular compliment. He right. said he liked your hair That's or whatever. Selfish, yeah. Right? Now he's a pervert. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? You're opening the door for her and yeah. she's taking it the wrong yeah, way. Yeah. Or, or, or something like that. But carrying you, her bag. Yeah. Things like that. And that some people were were just raised to compliment. And mm -hmm. like, I'm not like the thing is, though, I, I, I compliment like I'm secure enough in myself. I compliment fools like yeah. dope shoes or, you know, like when they rock a set, like oh, you got down on that Kill song that. or like this Kill song that. was hot. Like that song mm -hmm. you did live was dope or whatever. You yeah. know, that's a, that's a dope Fu Manchu mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dope faux hawk you got going on. Shout out to Kung Fu Vampire with a Fu Manchu yeah. and a faux hawk, man. Or that's a that's a mighty fine unibrow you have. <laughs> <laughs> going on there buddy uh, keep that rocking but you know that's you know i just i kind of wanted to talk about that we hit kind of both sides of that with yeah. the good thing um we're kind of tailing it off now we get into the rabbit fire round in a, in a minute pew, but pew, pew. um uh i did want to ask though um like for real what do you do when it's time that when you're done doing all your events for the day you know you handled the kids for the day um, and you're just ready to go home and, and relax or wherever you might go relax. What is it that you do? Uh, Calgon? Calgon take you away or yeah. video games? No. <laughs> I, I used to be a major gamer. Oh, you were a gamer? Oh, Thumb my wrestling. gosh, yes. <laughs> um, now I mostly... You fold origami. Meditate. No. <laughs> um, I, I used to crochet, so I'm excited to get See? back into crocheting again. Uh -huh. I, I have to stay very busy with my hands for some reason. I don't sit still, and I never have in my entire life. I, I know you so. said before you're not a TV person either. Like, uh -uh. you don't watch TV. And all no, that. I don't. And everything I do, I do in excess. So if I start watching TV, I fucking binge watch yeah, TV. And I'll watch it till like 4 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I don't even turn it on. I just don't I don't do stuff like that. So I'll meditate. Um, I'll, pre I'll plan my day for tomorrow. You know... In a lot of ways, I feel like I'm making up for lost time, like you talked about. You know, when you commit to something or somebody for an extended amount of time and you give it your all, like you mentioned, and then, you know, you realize that that's not where you're supposed to be at. The universe will show you you're not supposed to be there. They'll just keep oh, putting yeah. shit in your path to make you make y'all realize like this is not the path right mm. so i kind of been wanting to like make up for some of that lost time so i don't have any chill really you know and that's that's not normal so mm -hmm. don't you do that <laughs> y'all no, you know what i'm the, i'm the, the same way I'm, I'm in two areas there like um i do the same thing which is why i don't really get into too many series 
I, I, I do try to watch the Mayans. I'll catch the replay or whatever, but I don't get into too many like those Netflix series because mm-hmm. then I got to watch like fucking eight hours worth of TV or whatever. Um, I watch maybe Chopped and then I watch That's sport. my, one of my I, favorites. I got <laughs> Laker games, you know, you know, baseball, uh, football. Uh, and I don't catch all of them, just certain ones when I can because I'm always working as well. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, that that I related to that. I um, watch a lot of wrestling only because I'm doing research for a podcast we got coming up. Nice. And that's the only reason. <laughs> oh yeah, <Right. laughs> which is why we're right. doing that is because he's been watching it for yeah. fucking. Uh, no, but you're a, you're a reader also too, right? Don't you I get do. to read some books? Yeah, like, you know, I love like to like read novels books. or autobiographies or. You know, I don't read many novels. I've only read two novels in my whole entire life. The Count of Monte Cristo, Unabridged, is one of my favorites. As a historical novel, and Aztec by Gary Jennings, another historical novel. So those are both based on actual historical events but i i do i read more like self-help you know new age stuff things about like stuff to uh, motivational stuff too huh? yeah about yeah. the universe mm-hmm. about about St- you know stuff healing to soothe your mind and stuff you know yeah. ease your mind and give conspiracies you, some... you know oh, evil could, no. evil religions you know i i just evil cultures i just I, read a lot what's crazy is is reading <laughs> reading i get into the um I, and I, and not that I'm you know thinking about this or anything, but I like I trip out on like the 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 real nonfiction like of like serial killers and like shit, mm-hmm. C- serial killers, true crimes like the mobsters. It's just yeah. I think it's because like kind of I want to understand where they were when they were thinking this way yeah. type of thing. It's more a mental thing, but. I really get into that shit. Like What's I read the, ho- the whole like fucking book, hearing their stories and then like trying to imagine them in the modern era. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah. times are just so different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you know, on, and then on the note you were saying too about not much relaxing time. Like I've had more in the last two, three, two maybe three months than I've had in your whole life. The <laughs> most of my whole life, <laughs> most of it. Like really, I'm talking about even since I was a kid. Yeah, and. I'm finding I, like a lot of the t- not that I haven't been mad, but I got a, a bunch of shit going on behind the scenes right now. Trust me, like we're working, we're always working. But that's the thing is like when I'm not, I almost feel guilty to myself, like I'm supposed to be doing yeah. something, and like I don't know what to do with myself, and I get restless, and I, yeah. I'll start literally like I got into uh, like I I plant I, like I have plants and flowers yeah, and shit pets like now I, too. I, pet, I got a I've always had pets but now I got more pets than I probably ever had and <laughs> they uh, they relax me in the plants mm-hmm. and they, they 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 calm me down and let me know all right you, things are still like a plant shows you perfectly yeah. just nurture it little by little you don't have to get, be there all the time but that thing grows and it doesn't bark or it's not too loud yeah. that's my morning routine yeah. you know oh. plants and pets i do in the morning i yeah. take care of my, my plants same same here pets. yeah yeah my so tortoise getting bigger and <gasps> i want a tortoise that food or now i found out it's probably a female i posted Yay. it but it's a uh that's one of the most like the coolest pet like ever people comment and i go dude someone like actually dm me one of the homies uh uh damn I, can we get her a sancho well no yeah well that's what i want to yes. do but the reason like they started telling me at the pet store one. oh usually you never know they thought I because they breed them they thought i wanted to just breed them and they and they go well usually you don't know right away if it's a boy or a girl and i go i know that and oh and they don't always get along and i go wait i go I go, hold up. I go, I'm not trying to breed them. I go, I just, I actually just need a companion for it. Cause I feel like it's bored sometimes and stuff. Yeah. So. But, but it's one of the coolest pets. It's just really calming. Uh, the like, goes back there sometimes. Like you said, doesn't bark. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it, does it stay outside? Now it does, but it's bigger. But I, but I made like a custom a a, out of a dog house oh. and it's custom. I put heat lamps in there. <gasps> And it runs to an outlet that I have. So at night, I just plug in the heat lamp. And they, it even knows. It goes in. It's outside. It'll walk around. It's got like a big area. And then when at, towards nighttime, that fucker climbs up the it's steps, awesome. goes into bed in the little cave. And I, I turn on the, the heat lamp, and it's cool, man. I want one. Yeah, they're they're cool. I got a, I got a, I'm the new Ace Ventura. I talk about this all the time. I got, Let me know. We got dog, have- cat, hamster, uh, bunny, fish. And the tortoise. Oh, I'm a cat grandma now. Well, my hamster, my too. A hamster, I think I said. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what? That's funny because remember that when we did the uh, the Zoom I interviews? That, yeah. 
Her yeah. cat was like literally on her shoulder yeah. during the interview. Right, Katniss California, <laughs> man. He just California. came and laid like right on me. But yeah, we have new ones now, little babies, oh, and nice. they are Katniss's oh. babies. So it's two black ones, two white ones, and two cow print. Oh, so so anybody are, are they uh, oh, up for adoption soon or? Yeah, well okay. they they were just born, so okay. they're only like three eight days old. eight to twelve weeks, I believe. Yeah, yeah. and I am doing rehoming on this one because I want to know who's actually serious about it. Yeah. So Makes um, sense. they're coming with they're going to be dewormed and they're already going to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, like seventy five uh, bucks a rehoming fee. Yeah. Me, shout out to you. remember um, one time we had a um, some some cat left uh, uh, its a little kitten. At our oh. door, so we ended up with it. I mean, it Two of them house. got in my house, right? <gasps> but one of them escaped. And I couldn't yeah. catch it, oh. and because I felt sorry, I knew they they really didn't. Ha and yeah. one of them, it it got lost under the couch, oh. and so we we ended up catching it. And I felt so. I, it was such a cute cat, and and uh, oh. yeah, and uh, shit. What my brother to the homegirl um, Raquel. Raquel Queen of Bale. She, um, you know, we were looking for it. We put it out. We, you know, someone can adopt this kitten, and and we really tamed that kitten. It was it was really. And we kept it for about two to yeah. three weeks, and she and still it has the, the the kitten, the How cat. How sweet! I mean, this we is need like, to what, do an five, update. Yeah, yeah, and and she <laughs> loves that cat. She posts Tenchi, it. Tenchi, yeah, Tenchi. Aww. Shout out to Raquel and Tenchi. Yeah. So but that was dope. Yeah, she took good care. It of It was a cute nice. little cat, and and I even put like at the time, if someone wasn't serious, like. I was going to end up, even though I couldn't really take it at the time, I was going to keep it. Of course. But um, she ended up, and then a couple people hit me up, but I felt like she was the more serious. Yeah. And I even asked her, like, oh, you've been, oh, yeah, I love, I want a cat for my yeah. place. And, yeah. oh, my cat's going to, she started telling me going to be spoiled. And it is, her cat's, like, has everything it needs. So, oh, sweet. So it was a good yeah. deed we did. That's hey, so awesome. let's get into it, man. Uh, uh, favorite, do you have a favorite cereal? Mm. I'm such an old person. I just like rice checks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You put any sugar? Or you didn't like that? I eat it with strawberries. Or bananas. Oh, okay. yeah. That's good with bananas. I don't know what's up with me, man. I, I've been an old lady, like, since childhood. Well, yeah, that's no. I like uh, rice checks are good. That's my that's my yeah style. rice. Is checks. that what I said? Did you yeah, say rice? Okay, okay, okay. No. I was like, wait. Well, they have different checks, I think. Huh? Yeah, no, but, but I didn't know if she did. She I say like, rice? rice yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yo, because they have like wheat and corn yeah, and fucking. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what else, but I yeah I, I used to like the rice, but I used to put sugar in them when yeah, I was a kid. I'm kind of the opposite. I never grew up, so I eat stuff like those like fruity pebbles or or. You like, eat all that. The, the kids, the sugary He's skinny stuff. fat. You know what else is good? Skinny fat. Uh, Lucky Charms are still good and cinnamon toast crunch i like but yeah um rice checks i think came from we would throw sugar on it because you know we would get the stuff like from donations sometimes yeah. back in the day like the the cheap cereals cheerios uh -huh. so to make it better yeah my, my mom would either milk. she'd either throw that some <laughs> sugar or some strawberries or bananas when you live shit. in the hood kicks, yeah you kicks, know kicks, 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 chocolate meat. you know what it, it, see she knows what i'm talking about <laughs> giving me flashbacks Cheat. and shit uh let me see um uh, let me. I got a couple. Okay, favorite uh, taco besides asada. Pastor. Okay, that's I mine too. That's my ish. Chicken, I don't even chicken's eat close, but oh, you don't? I do, but it's I have to know you cook it fire. Oh, okay, because yeah. I cook, yeah. so it's like it takes a lot for me to want to eat something. You gotta outdo me. Yeah, you know so what I'm as saying. Asada to me is the the bomb, but yeah, you're right. Some of that shit's dry. Or yeah, no or you're flavor. just chewing on it, and you're just like, I don't even want to. What about like Asian or it. Italian food? Which I like one? Thai. That's Thai really is my favorite. That would fall under, yeah. yeah. And sushi. Okay. And how about, uh, do you have uh, your favorite female MC? Ooh, wow. Just, Gosh, there's just, so many eras. Uh, there's so many, but I mean, like, if, if like, who you enjoy listening to the most, their persona and everything. All, like, yeah. I, you know, I love Rod Digga. Voice. That's yeah. why I had her on. Rod Digga's up amazing. there for me, too. Yeah. I also like Foxy, even though, like, it, it, it went back and forth, you know, with her and Little Kim, obviously. But um, I, I thought at the time when she came out and then, like, her voice, like there was a lot of different factors in it. Mm -hmm. I thought were dope. I'm old school with it, with them. I like Gangsta Boo. I like you know Boss. Oh well, if you, you want to go Sister, there, Sister Soldier, MC Light. MC I, Light. I had some of her cassettes. Roxanne Chante. Yeah. I, you know that's kind of my era. MC Light was um, the same thing. She had lyrics, but I I loved her voice. She had like a different. Era, I would say Rhapsody. 
oh, she's dope. She's real dope. Yeah. She's on another level shit. Definitely. <laughs> like, all right. And and, I, and what's crazy, I was going to say, besides, and there's still, we didn't even mention Lauren Hill up in there, but I mean, we I also think, didn't mention Medusa, the legend. Oh, Medusa, dog. Thanks she's the up goddess. There. Yeah, Thanks she's up the there. With, yeah, she's she's just straight hard. You got any, Shay? So that, I mean, that's the one I just came up on the top I, of my head right now. <laughs> like, and, and, and no, um, okay, Mariah or Whitney? Whitney. She um, was such a G, dude. She was, and I don't know why. For me, Mariah slightly edges her out, and I think it might be. I know they were both dope live. Don't get me wrong. Um, a little of live, but I think maybe song. I, I probably liked a couple more of Mariah's songs than I liked of Whitney. I don't know that. Maybe because she came out with Bone. That that was cool too. That was a dope song. That song was well, dope. My thing is, I think because uh, Mariah, I say Mariah because I had like a when she first came out, I had like a mean crush on her. I was, <laughs> I, I was yeah, she was like hot. In high school or, or I was young. I was in junior high, mm-hmm. high school when she came out, but I was like, whoa. That gets into your <laughs> question regarding the healthy boundaries, though. Um, you know, was that really Mariah or was that Tommy Matola? Mm-hmm. You oh, know I, I, mean? I got you. Right. Do we did we really meet Mariah mm-hmm. or you know did we meet Mariah years later when she was actually with Nick Cannon? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, was that the real Mariah that would have been Mariah if it wasn't for Tommy Matola? So that yeah. kind of you know when it comes to stuff like that, you but know, and her voice was just it's just amazing. But then truly, and yeah. then we got to consider if like you know, and then if if. Uh, Whitney never ended up with Bobby. Things would have probably been different too. You know what? <laughs> right? Everybody says that, but to be you don't honest, think so? I I did some research on that, and uh-huh. Whitney was the one. That, she was so the desmadre. Yeah. Well, you know what? They they depict some of that in a couple because there's multiple documentaries on that, but they depict a little bit of that in some of them. I, I hear what you're saying. She was thug, yo. Whitney was. She was a gangster, and yeah. and I don't think Bobby was more kind of like. He was still every little step. He yeah. was more clean uh, cut at the time, and I think she kind of took him down the path. Oh, I'm shit. just saying. And it happens. We've, yeah. seen, we've seen it. Now. Some people can handle certain things, yeah. and other people have no business doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. So mm. just because someone you roll with is doing something doesn't mean you got to go ahead and be on that same path. You feel me? Like, and, and I think you, when you get to that point with people or yourself, when you have enough self-control of yourself not to just feel comfortable because everybody else or whatever – a lot sometimes it's peer pressure whatever it might be but when you get to that point some like relationships whether friendships or anything are a lot better because it it falls into boundaries again yes like then your friends start to like my friends know not to fucking offer me to shoot up heroin or 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 to do speed in front of you you know to do speed or whatever Mm -hmm. i I just i'm naturally skinny like i and i and that's again another reason like i don't need to not eat like i'm one of those people but it's just one of them things where even people that I knew uh, back in this is back in the day. I don't really, mm-hmm. I I don't really. This is a kick, 90s stuff. I don't really kick it with people who are like doing yeah. too much of that anymore. But um, back then, you're in situations you can't, you know, people in the hood, whatever. But it got to a point where they at least knew not to offer me, or mm-hmm. you know, I'd like I'll smoke some weed, I'll yeah. drink some beer, but you or know, it's like my girl, like she eats keto, but she knows not to give uh, make keto <laughs> for me because I'm, I'm too skinny. Yeah. Hey, look, you know, she makes no, hers, you know, makes no for me. keto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those those uh, cheesy tacos with the cheese uh, as a tortilla, that are pretty dope though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey man, I see. I haven't tried one of those yet. I get the, mm. the mulitas have enough yeah, cheese. That's for, uh, my shit Chicana right there. Had made those, so I remember she made them for. Shout it, out yeah. Chicana con hambre. And and uh, I think I got a couple more. Uh, do you have a favorite actress, or if a couple of them? A favorite actress. Who's my favorite actress? I like Reese Witherspoon, y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah. She had some. Election. Um, if you haven't seen Election, you need to check out that movie. It's just funny. I'm trying to think who comes off top to me as a favorite actress right now. I can't think. I, I know, uh, well, I mean, Meryl Streep, she's just classic. Yeah, wanna, like, everything she's been in, like, she's another one of those ones who's able to, I mean, obviously, you, you see, I, mean, I think, how many Oscars does she have? I think, like. More than she can count. Yeah, I, I forgot how many she has. But, so did she. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. But, I mean, it, it, it comes down memory. to, like, sometimes these, these ladies are, are, are able to play so many different characters like mm-hmm. even uh was it Charlize Theron when she played the the, the monster She's uh badass. what's I forgot the uh I forgot the real lady's name but she was a, a serial killer um but because she was preyed upon she went through so much as a kid but she was literally like if you go back on that the real story of that lady I I, I can't think of her name now 
there again, Shay marijuana. <laughs> hey, but <laughs> but um, uh, the thing is, she wasn't. Uh, what's the word to use? She was a homely looking person. Mm. She wasn't the most attractive person. And so Charlize Theron had to transform herself basically and to to and she did a great job yeah, of that. I thought that was up. dope. Yeah. yeah. I like Goldie Hawn too. Oh, Goldie Hawn. Dude, I was just telling my lady, like, um, because we were watching a movie, I forgot which one it was with her daughter in it. Oh um, yeah, it was the a one. Oh, key? no, it was the. That's a good movie, y'all. My, my lady was watching the uh, ten, uh, how to lose your man in ten days or oh, some okay. shit, and uh, and I was kind of like off and on, falling asleep, <laughs> waking up, and I happened to make a comment. I go, she has a, a like a real pretty face, like whether she wore makeup or not, like her mom. And I said the thing, and I told her, I said when I was a kid, I go Goldie Hawn was the shit. Like I'm talking about a little little kid, like five six in in elementary school i made sure every time there was a movie with goldie hahn i was like right there. Like, she was so pretty that probably loved the, her in overboard Overboard. Was yeah. 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 <laughs> she was bad <laughs> in overboard yeah. Yeah. she's yeah. got a little strawberry mark on the back oh of yeah. yeah see oh so you re- <laughs> okay so you really seen the movie i love that movie because we know yeah, about that <laughs> and then now and it's crazy like uh kurt russell's the the yeah. main guy in the movie and yeah. they're like they're like a hood couple that never got married you know who's a pretty good actress i like is uh emma stone she's a uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. She's, she's dope so. she does she's funny as like a, in comedy movies but she also mm-hmm. does like can do the serious nice. role too, which is pretty, and then pretty and good. then what's that girl um I, I mean i haven't seen too much of her stuff but um I like she Michelle Rodriguez. Is that her oh, name? Oh, dude, yeah. she she's the Fast and Furious movie. Yeah, she's uh, badass. I was thinking I liked the other her girl. In, uh, Resident Evil. Oh. The the one that has she's kind of a rough voice. Um, mm. uh, she's blonde. Rosie O'Donnell. No oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Roseanne. Ellen. Roseanne Barr. Uh, fuck, I can't think of her name. She was on like a like a Justin Timberlake video. Um, oh. Uh, fuck. Britney I can't Spears? No, no. Oh, shit. Air Remember Ball Headed Britney? Oh, dude, that was classic. That's badass. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I like, that was probably my favorite Britney. Dude, there's certain memes. I loved it. There's certain memes, like, it doesn't matter what they put on the meme. It's just the picture itself gets me. And one of them's Ball Headed Britney when she's like in the middle of like yelling something. Another one's the one of Tom Cruise when he was happy as shit on Oprah's couch mm-hmm. when he's just like has a big ass smile. And there was one more, dude. I just saw oh, it. And he was oh, you're love. talking about the one where we talked about last week when David Hasselhoff was eating a hamburger. Oh, oh no, shit. that no, but see that <laughs> had, that hasn't had many memes made of it. But there's another one, dude. And, oh no, I can't think of it, man. I see, I'm 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 lost today. But um, there's just certain memes, no matter what they put on it, and it's it's just fucking hilarious. No matter they don't it, the words don't matter. It's just the <laughs> picture itself. But Tom Cruise when he was happy as shit, it makes me laugh every time, dude. Um, anyways, I, I wanted to get to, um, you know, let the people know what you've been working on lately. I know you got a lot of stuff coming up. Um, the, and the one that you did with, with the ladies on, uh, man, that was dope. Talk about those things. Yeah. So, um, I got an opportunity and sometimes, you know, people will give you an opportunity and you can run with it the way that they set it up for you or you can take it to another level Mm -hmm. i tend to like to take things to another level so i followed directions and i put together a mixtape series for the autry museum and the mixtape memories museum or the mixtape museum in new york new york um new york new york that's why i said it twice so um i i went ahead and put that mixtape together for the radio show but then um i took it a step further and i curated a series three of them now um and all of the ladies came out and they did their performances and we're going to be releasing those probably in june so you'll be seeing those and they are magnificent these women came out and did they do their thing i was selling the yes. seeing the behind the scenes yeah, some of them are the home girls yeah, like yeah. we've had them on the show and like a lot of them i know like like homies and shit so it was good to see that especially all of you guys together it it was beautiful i love to see them shine and um you know they were able to really take it to the next level and show 
you know, their professionalism and, and the refinement of them really perfecting their craft because this was like five 4K cameras and a full-on camera crew and a production manager. And, I mean, it was like... And them understanding um, is an intimate performance. There's no audience. There's no yes. crowd. You're performing for the people that are about to watch. So yes. it's it's a whole nother it level. It was so beautiful. So I can't wait to share that with you guys. That's uh, one of the things that I've been working on. And uh, I was able to host the Flow & Tell anniversary. Nice. Um, so that's a Project Blowed collaboration. Shout out to Abby Rizzo. Yeah. All them, yes. Shout out to Ab Rude and thank you for the opportunity, brother Ab. Um, and so, yeah, I hosted that. So y'all, y'all will be seeing that. That's being edited down right now as well. Uh, Ashley Dominique was one of the hosts on that as well. So shout out to her and uh, Ash Dom. What up? Yes, yeah, my girl. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, those are probably two of my most favorite. One thing I would like to do is uh, share a call to action. So I have a couple producers that I've been working with, and these are producers. They're heavy hitters, but you know, a lot of producers don't have a humongous following. You know, they're not all Alan the Chemist. Mm-hmm. They are very talented, but we tend to not focus on giving producers their their rite of passage. We don't give them their shine, and we don't realize that. The reason why you really fuck with that song is because the producer is so oh, talented. Yeah. You don't realize that, and you're like, man, I fuck with this. Okay, what are the lyrics? You don't really know, do you? We, we've been you seeing, just like the beat. We've been seeing a lot of people uh, kind of bringing that to the forefront. You I'm glad. you got to give the producers their props. I'm man. glad. Yeah. I switched my emphasis to producers probably about five years ago from MCs to producers and really started collabing more um, on the production side and on the executive production side. So right now, if y'all are ready to work and you want to to take it to the next level, some of you have seen my work, some of you have not, but I'm talking like professionally produced, we're talking with collectibles, we're talking with clothing, we're talking, if you're interested in something like that, get at me in my DM, you already know, if you don't follow me, I don't know what to tell you. If you follow my brothers, you should already be following me too, because right. they tag me in most of the. We'll things. give that info. Don't worry. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it'll be it'll be coming up in the next couple of months. So I'll be sending out beat packs and um, just different ways that you guys can plug in. And these are deals. So the deal will be for like an EP kind of thing, a, a one off EP. So yeah. so you know, with with that being said, I, and shout out to the artists that do get it, because I've also seen on. Um, the other side of that, there are a couple artists that do understand, and they, and it probably comes with all the extra hoopla they got to deal with. Mm-hmm. You know, some of these producers get so big they think they're the star of the show all the time. And no, mm-hmm. no disrespect of that. Do your thing, but a lot of the times people just want to get in the lab and make music. And yeah, and I've seen a lot of artists that are just coming and getting, and they're they got a big enough of a platform and an audience. Um, but they're reaching out and getting like producers that like you're talking about that maybe be in their garage still making beats some yeah. raw shit but some rugged raw dope production and there's so much talent out there that's not in the forefront and to your point um, we got to do you know watch these platforms like these where you can tap in and there's so much talent out there we got to give shine you know not everybody don't want all the complete shine and People, you know, following them to the restroom when they're in a restaurant to go piss. But the thing Mm -hmm. is, there's so much talent out there that Mm -hmm. you need to, like, make yourself aware of. You do yourself a favor if you love music. Watch the B-side and you'll find a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) We do a lot of homework for you. Or or Danny K's shows. Uh, Go ahead and speak on the shows that you do, too, before we we end the show. Thank you. So I'm on the air in Los Angeles every single Thursday for Soundtrack of the Streets. There's no father to our style. We play what we want, when we want, how we want for you. This Thursday that just passed, I did a Mayhem Loren tribute for his birthday. It was really grimy, super hella dope. Nice. Um, so I clean up your music, guys, because y'all's music needs to be cleaned up most of the time. Um, and I play it on the air, and this is stuff that we don't usually get to hear on the radio. We don't get to hear Rock Marciano on the radio. We don't get to hear your Action Bronsons and your and your Mayhem Lorenz and your West Side Guns. We don't get to hear that on FM radio. So I take the time during the week, and shout out to Ecotone for helping me out with that. That's my right-hand man. Um, and we just bring you some some really grimy stuff we play whatever we want fridays is orat uh oratory glory and that's where the spirit of the artist tells the story so uh, i go a little bit deeper the artists they give me their information and i chart them and we peel back the layers on the path the life path that they're on and some of the different things that they've been experiencing and how that 
adds to their music and um, it's really dope it's pretty deep and if if it's an artist that you're interested in or maybe somebody that you haven't heard of yet but you might connect with their story it's it's something that really just most of the time people are like wow this is amazing like I didn't realize your show was this deep and I really get um a, a kick out of sharing that with people because when we nice. connect with an artist on a spiritual level yeah um we feel differently about their music from that point moving forward so yeah. I'm happy about that it's all in on the like whether you're you know promoting or not it's like you feel it in a different way and that's that's real yeah every fourth Monday I get to yeah. curate the Oracle edition yeah, of the B-side right. show yep. y'all bad day Kilo. bang bang yeah with my brothers here Shay Whitey and Rabito yeah and um they let me basically paint a picture of what I want for the B-side and so they just give me you know the reins and it's amazing I get to bring all the elements we have coming this month a uh, popping and locking dope little segment that we're going to share with you guys it's going to be really really lit nice. and next month my special guest is uh the producer from brown skin lady which is a black star album mm -hmm. and he's going to be our guest dj so i'm not going nice. to share everybody but yeah i i'm re working really hard to bring you know different different style and different energy to what the b-side already does amazingly well and and, I and also it. um adding that extra accent on the elements yeah. man the elements of hip-hop yes. and we thank you for that too bringing that yeah you know, man oracle edition every sure. fourth monday on the b-side yes. show act thank like you, you know every single Ooh. monday we do this and, and uh any shout outs you want to make yeah uh shout out to all of you guys who support my brothers Thank you very here? Much. Yes, who support my brothers and and to my brothers themselves. But I appreciate you guys for you know coming into the chat, for participating. Everybody who offers to assist with photography mm -hmm. and the guest DJs who come through, all of you guys make it what it is, including the audience who yes. gives us the thumbs up and the likes and supports and reposts. Yeah, you're going to say like repost, uh, Chris Manlo is yeah. one of them who always reposts. Yeah, Thank you so much much yeah um i appreciate you we appreciate you and this wouldn't be what it is without you guys so yeah. shout out to y'all and you know what we're gonna encourage more of that man you guys just keep reposting we'll make sure we blast it out and and shout you guys out on a, on the shows when we can and we're gonna get back to that like we did in the original days we we'll try to shout everybody in the chats and all that stuff so yeah we'll get back to it hey real quick i wanted to uh shout out this uh the sponsor of today's show man uh uh spins the homie man he's got the, the gringo papers these this is made out of uh all recycled paper man it's uh you know like environmentally safe type of shit it, it says packaging made even the packaging is made out of 100 percent recycled paper but those are really great papers y'all yeah. um i can't remember when i met spins but um he definitely gave me a couple of those and y'all I, can you show them how big that is? When yeah, you, when these you are the paper? these it's are like the. A triple XL. I'm trying to <laughs> gringo papers for a green smoke. Basically, you know what it is. It's They're like green. this big, y'all. Yeah, look. Yeah, and super long. Yeah. XL. Yeah. Like you can you can roll a nice cone. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and and good thing this show is also visual, so you can see that we're talking about papers here. We're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about the size of this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you. I want to thank you, Daddy, for co uh, for coming through with us and, and uh, chopping it up. Uh, we look forward to the next uh, Oracle edition, as always. But um, just we're, we're trying to have a, a this podcast is just cool conversations with different people that I chop it up with. It's not, not going to be all artists and uh, it, it's not one way. Like we've had a guy we talked about mental health, my homie, yes. um, that ha that's in the, the field and uh, we're going to have producers, uh, athletes, directors. We've already had uh, comedians um, and artists. So That's it's, it's, awesome. Yeah. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for That's having right. me. Like salesmen. Yeah. Have, uh, Again, uh, uh, encyclopedia yeah. salesmen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ooh. Uh, That's later. I don't know. <laughs> well, well, hey, you have any uh, anything you want to add? Uh, just shout out to, like like she said, man, everybody that's, uh, you know, that supports and, you know, reposts, that tunes in, that comments, that watches. And just, you know, thanks for the support and uh, just stay tuned for more. Stay tuned. We, we got a lot of stuff coming up, man. <laughs> Rabbit Season Podcast, and we're out. Peace. <laughs>